very nice properties with respect to Brown measure. And uh, they also proved And for every four outside of the range projection. <clears throat> cold this morning on my run seems to have messed up my voice anyway um the range projection the range of the projection is the closure Not um, objects and so I said I'd, I'd say what it is. <clears throat> it's the set of for every V in set V. Or every, and in fact, you can define these for arbitrary sets, not necessarily Borel sets. <clears throat> for every zeta and b, for every epsilon greater than zero, um, there is, sorry, there exists an epsilon greater than zero. And there exists um, function from the ball to h, which is holomorphic. And that T minus lambda I of F of lambda is equal to eta. So this is for all lambda in the ball. And so, you know, actually for every, oh yeah, uh, yeah, oh, thank you. Um, uh, actually, um, so for every eta, you actually get an, um, an open set, which is bigger than the complement. And the complement of that is called the local spectrum of key at eta. But um, so that, that will be a subset of, of um, B, but it can, that, that subset can vary with eta. So. Okay, so putting together the control set, some known results about decomposable operators who oh, this was in a paper with Joel and That, um, or two. Um, following our equivalent. Well, Second way. Restricted to the well, T times the Ha group Schultz projection corresponding to F. So, this is, of course, the spectrum taken in the cut down algebra is inside of F. And the other corner for complement of F, spectrum of that is also inside of F. And equivalent way, third equivalent condition for all Borel sets. 
see we have similar but in the closures So the message we take away from this, there's a, uh, there's a compliment here. And that flips the, it makes a compliment there. So everything works out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's the open set here, but, or here, but. So, you, so again, uh, the the intuition, it's it's the set of vectors. So it's like, um, so p may include points that are not in the result, but nonetheless, for certain vectors. Makes sense as an analytic function, even if this is not defined, right? And this is just saying this is the vectors where this makes sense in the complement of B. That's what this this equation says um, as an analytic function. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And I have a good question. The way we defined decomposable initially it was like dependent on the Hilbert space that C is represented on, the spectral capacity. Yeah. Is it clear from that definition that it's sort of always representation independent, or is that some fact that we're getting out of this for this? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, So it's all regardless of whether he was in a planet or not, but it's the same. Whether the the high group short subspaces are hyper invariant and are are these yeah, that's that's probably correct. Then. A little bit. <clears throat> They're really the same. Okay. I, yeah, I think Kari's right. His message took away, I think, from this <clears throat> proposition is that. Like binomial algebra is the same as is no space between spectrum. And support a brown measure. This particular <clears throat> formulation of that, um, and then it's, um, it seemed to us natural to wonder about uh, for the upper triangular forms. Actual question. <clears throat> that same 
brown measure as d plus the SOT quasi-nilpotent. So with respect to some fixed of the sport of brown measure. Um, is decomposability equivalent to its SOT quasi nilpotent is actually quasi nilpotent because that's the only place where we sort of see difference distance could see distance between brown measure sport of brown measure and spectrum in this picture right so it's, we have. Only the Q is actually quasi nilpotent, not just SOT quasi. And um, well, we don't know the answer to that, but we have uh, partial positive results. So to state the results, I need to introduce the notion of strongly decomposable, so T in B of H is strongly decomposable. If well, set K in complex plane is um, restriction of T to the spectral capacity subspace known as S T of K is also decomposable. And clear that it should be, but actually it's it's not the case. So um, from earlier examples of the analogs in Bonnach space and then Eschmeyer 88 produced an example in the Hilbert space. Example of T in e H that is decomposable. Not strongly decomposable. His example is based on a weighted shift operator. And um, so it, it's clear that his example can't live in a in a finite von Neumann algebra. And it's actually unknown whether the two notions of decomposable and strongly decomposable are equivalent in finite von Neumann algebra. It's unknown to me. Um, Okay, right here is the theorem. Examine. Oh, let's see. Let me know if you're Then we have a series of implications. T. Probably decomposable. Lies. Exactly. Q is always quasi nilpotent for all continuous spectral orderings, uh, continuous orderings of support of Brown measure. In the Corresponding upper triangular form, then plus Q. Q is actually quasi nilpotent. Second one 
this implies is decomposable. And this implies another property, which is called the shifted norm convergence property. So um, it could be that all the reverse implications hold too. These could all be equivalent. Um, and they are equivalent in the case that um, the support of Brown measure is finite. Then all are equivalent. And moreover, <clears throat> can replace this for all by an exist, right? As is second condition for all. Well, I mean, sort of stupid. There are only finitely many orderings of what a Brown measure when it's finite, but in all of them, <clears throat> of course, the Q, Q is either SOT quasi, Q is either quasi nilpotent in all of them, or it not. So th that property might also hold in general, but we don't know. Okay, and I should say what this shifted norm convergence property is. It also is something like, well, okay. and we say T has the norm convergence property. If so this sequence, T to the n, T star to the n, raised to the power one over two n, that Hagrup and Schultz proved converged in SOT in strong operator topology. If this sequence converges in norm, and T has Shifted norm convergence property. If for every scalar lambda, T minus lambda times the identity has the norm So we do know that NTP <clears throat> does not imply shifted norm convergence property, it's strictly linear. Ah, yes, the spectrum of T. Um, yeah, so this is something we called um, S full, full support of Brown measure. If the Brown, support of the Brown measure is the Spectrum. It's also implied by the shifted norm convergence property. Well, that's that could be added to this theorem, but it clearly um, 
the reverse implication here fails. So I didn't include it in this um, statement. Also, we have a stronger version, a stronger decomposable that we call Morel decomposable, but to even define it, it's a little bit um, involved. So I'm not going to. It could also be equivalent to all of these in the context of a finite binomial algebra. But I won't go in, into that here. OK. So that knowledge. Uh, um, uh, what we know about um, decomposability, finite binomial algebras. And now I'd like to address um, spectral operators in finite binomial algebra. So here, the um, sort of joint work with um, Amudan Krishna Swami Usha. Work right at once here and abbreviated after that. So this is in a couple of papers. One appeared in 21 and one has just been accepted. So um It's all about angles between how to show the projection. So in closed subspaces V and W in alpha V W it's of course by definition the inf of uh, code, the inverse cosine uh, value is a product. That's V ranges over H. A V range over V. And we'll say P in finite binomial algebra has uh, a non-zero angle property. And for all Borel sets B in the complex plane, uh, let's say such that um, is strictly between zero and one. So both the high group Schultz projection corresponding to B and the one corresponding to B complement are non zero. We have that we have that the angle between Schultz projections, or rather their ranges, B and B complement. Now, um, if the angle is strictly positive, that's the same as saying that I'll break some of these two subspaces, closed subspaces, and closed. And because we know that PTB join PTB complement is the whole space, it says that the algebraic sum of these two spaces is the whole space, H. And then one can construct, because the angle is strictly positive, a bounded, bounded idempotent having um, range this one and kernel this one. And the bounded idempotents, as you know, are, are crucial for the notion of spectral operators. So see how this is already tying into that. 
And then we say T has the uniform non zero angle property. U and Z A, if they're just, uh, as you can imagine, some kappa greater than zero, such that for all B, you know, let's say is greater than kappa, right? So this angle is greater than something bounded away from zero. Okay, and actually, uh, we haven't been able to find an example of something that has the, so cl clearly UNZA implies NZA, um, and we don't know if the reverse implication holds or not. That's not as going to really be. Maybe we're just not smart enough, but. UNZA, SNZA, and question. Right, well, if you have UNZA, then as I said, you can construct these idempotents, each of which is bounded, and then you can, uh, you see you get, well, you get, and because you have UNZA, they will be uniformly bounded in norm. And then you have, uh, you easily construct um, a bounded idempotent value spectral measure as we saw in the first talk. So, um, using that, that for T and M, following our equivalent. So, this is going to be like first is that T has U and Z A. It's going to be like T is a spectral operator that for the quantum equivalent S of the quantum equivalent Q. So there exists S and Q in M that they commute. S is a scalar type. Q is SOT quasi no potent. And T is S plus Q. How much time do I have left? Oh, how much time? Pretty okay, great. Um, and then we can also do, you know, we've got this, you know, basically this S is exactly the integral of this, of, of lambda E D lambda, where E is the bounded idempotent valued spectral measure you get from, uh, from the, you know, the UNZA property. And then using the technique of Wormer, you find the, Invertible A that converts the idempotent value spectral measure to a regular spectral measure. And so you can show that equivalently is that there exists. They're right over here, sorry. <clears throat> a. N and Q prime in M such that A is convertible and it's normal. Q prime is SOT quasi no potent. Uh, 
and and then q prime commute and t when conjugated by a okay Here in this special case, decomposability of T, when we have U and Z, decomposability really does correspond to the Q being quasi nilpotent and not just SOT quasi nilpotent. So that's theorem. Oh, T in M. Greater. It's an only if. It has the UNT. Only non zero angle property. Okay, so this allows us to look at some of our favorite decomposable operators and try to determine whether they have UNZA, uh, wh whether they're spectral or not, by investigating the angles between the um, Hagrup Schultz projection. And in fact, um, so we have yeah. descriptions of the Hagrup Schultz projections for. Uh, Closed disks and complements of open disks, right, coming from the group Schultz um, work, um, which I'll, I'll mention again in just a moment. Um, so, first thing is actually I'll write down a very easy example, and that's what I did. Um, let's take our finite binomial algebra to be just the direct sum of copies of the two by two matrices. And let's take uh, any old trace as long as it's faithful on this L infinity direct sum. But so for specificity, we can take, um, we can take the weights one over two to the n times trace. Okay. And then let's take T be the operator 0, 1, 0, 1 over n, direct sum n from 1 to infinity. D um, has spectrum 0 and 1 over n, but there's 1 here. Uh, when you compute the angle between eigen, the eigenvectors for these two spectral points, that's going to 0, right? So it's not surprising. Then okay, we have the spectrum of T. Just typical integers zero, but it's easy to see. Okay, so we know T is decomposable because it has um, a totally disconnected spectrum. But it's not hard to see that the angle between subspace corresponding to the singleton zero and the rest is zero. Right. So non zero angle property. So it's not decomposable. Oh, sorry. So it's not spectral. Okay. I, you certainly don't need our fancy theorem to see that T is not spectral, right? I mean, that's 
But anyway, that's an easy example, easy application of it. Um, um, more non-trivial results are about the, uh, the DT operators, which uh, were mentioned briefly in the talk of Papesh Yadav. And uh, well, unfortunately, I, I don't think I have time to say much more about them, but um, so they were studied in a paper group five and all the operators, which include uh, what was the circular operator. Are from the And then by looking at the um, angles between Hagerup Schultz projections with Amudan Krishna Swami Usha, fail to have the non-zero angle property, or some of them we only prove fail the uh, U and the A, but in any case, are not spectral. So the DT operators, they are, I'm for a measure, measure of mu supported in a complex plane, compactly supported measure. Um, well, and basically they amount to putting mu down the diagonal and putting a special upper half of a, of a semicircular operator up here. In any case, so you get one for every measure mu, and it's clear that if mu is finitely supported under so many points, then the yeah, operator is a measure. Right. But um, um, I don't know, it might be interesting to look at. So the examples we have are like the circular operator and ones where the mu's are radially symmetric and have some, some, some sort of blow up property. Um, and, um, and I'm not sure about, for example, you that are supported on uh, kind of many points. Interesting to look at that. And maybe some of our same techniques will work, um, but it really comes down to exhibiting elements of Hagerup Schultz projections that are um, close in angle. And so, that amounts to having some pretty explicit um, estimates of norms of resolvance of these DT operators, and, and that we only, uh, we only obtained so far in certain cases. Anyway, all right. So in the remaining uh, uh, minutes, I would like to um, go back to the fundamental result of Hagerup Schultz and say something about um, some elements of the proof of that. Um, which I think... It's really, really beautiful. And it relates to Stanford 
functional calculus that we saw in the first um, first lecture. So Uh, remember this is now central form of that subspace called a case of R. Um, special form of the cognitive choice projection. A set of C's and H such that there exists a C point BN converging with C such that the um, P to the N C norm one over N this is clearly a hyperinvariant a T hyperinvariant subspace if you have S that commutes with T and you multiply C by it, then um, S C N converges and I should put an N here, I'm sorry. N should go here. If you have the S here, you can take it out and the take out the norm of S and the one over N kills that. So it's clear that this subspace is invariant under all operators that commute with T. This is T hyper invariant. But um, they assert that this thing, um, projection onto this has a certain trace um, and does the right thing by Brown measure. So when you restrict T to this, it's Brown measure becomes a restriction of the Brown measure to the unit disk, uh, to the disk of radius R and so on. So this has trace, I'm gonna say projection onto it has trace. Um, now, uh, Brown measure of R times the closed unit disk and restriction to it. Details again, that's the right thing. A Brown measure. At least in the case the Brown measure of the boundary of the disk is zero. Okay. So um, you recall Brown measure was defined in terms of this function um, of log of the absolute value of T minus lambda um i and um this function also makes sense for certain unbounded operators so brown measure is also is actually defined and and Hagru and schultz um the paper that was basically simultaneous that contained the invariant subspace results and actually, for an introduction to Brown measure, uh, this paper of theirs, I think, was oh, okay. I forget the year. Uh, this is a good one to look at. Our group showed, showed that uh, Brown measure is defined. For all, the bigger they call it, they didn't quite call it. I don't think they called it this. We call it L log of M T M tau, which is um, set of all operators T affiliated to. So T could be an unbounded operator affiliated to M.
such that if you take log plus of absolute t, it has finite trace. Or log plus is just log is just positive. So Well, log plus um, actually uh, logical algebra called F norm, but it, I don't need to use any of that. They only need that it contains all the LPs, the non commutative LPs, or P less than one. For p less than one is a crucial thing, and all right. Um, yeah, one. Um, and then they considered Tn. So, so now fix T in M. Now take Tn to be T plus one over N times um, perturbation. This is perturbation um, by a circular times the inverse of a circular element. So X and Y are circular, star free circulars. And star free from M. So you may have to enlarge M by the free product with a copy of LMS four to get that. That's no problem. Um, and then they show that curving, the Brown measure is supported on the whole complex plane and is absolutely continuous. Back to the bag measure. And crucially, they show that the Okay, I should mention Y inverse, of course, is not bounded. This, these are in LP for certain P less than one. And then they show that map that goes to the resolvent of this TN. This is also in LP. The support of the Brown measure is everything, so this is never invertible as a bounded operator. But it is in LP for certain P less than one. I'm being pretty fast and loose here. Um, so this is suitably Lipschitz with respect to a certain metric on LP. Uh, yeah, I'm being kind of hazy here. And then because it's through the it's a, they show that you can Riemann integrate it. So you can define Tn. Time, but just a couple more minutes, if I may. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks. Um, take the integral. This is like the recess for functional calculus around the contour of radius r to the zero. Um, Resolving this existing in LP so just like the case we considered this is an idempotent but now it's an unbounded idempotent in an LP nonetheless we can consider its range projection So let Pn be the projection 
or the two orthogonal projection onto the range of EN. And then, okay, it would be great if these things converged, but we don't know that. So what they do is they put them in an ultra power. We can take PN and from one to infinity, uh, last of that, and the ultra power of M will actually, um, you know, you may have to extend that to this bigger M and deal with ultra power. And now this is a bona fide projection in that ultra power. And in, in the, in the, in the, you, have, you have still have T in here. <clears throat> so it actually has to live generated by T and they show it does the right thing. All the stuff, all the properties I mentioned at the beginning that it did the projection on this KR and it had the right Brown measure and the restriction P or to, to one minus P on the other corner to the right thing, my Brown measure. Okay, sorry, I went over. Thank you very much for, to the organizers and to you for So uh, the only assumptions of the phenomenon I was just trying to prove is that they're finite. Do you have any sense that uh, if you are making assumptions about properties of M that it might uh, enhance the these theorems? In fact, for reality, it might just be finite. I don't think so because you know, some of the counter examples that we constructed are just in direct sums of matrix algebras. They can be embedded into any factor, but they're also not factor. So I guess. The only thing that could be enhanced is if we assume it's uh, commutative one on the algebra. <laughs> Everything gets easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, question. Um, actually, in our first paper with Amudan, he treated the case of our diagonal operators. And that includes that exactly what what we call the circular free Poisson operators. And we did use some R diagonal results about resolvents and so on for that. Um, and we have not been able to do anything else with other R diagonal operators. So that's a, a good a good idea to look at those, but uh, we weren't able to do anything. Other questions? Well, that's a sign. Okay. okay.